sir. Okay, we're good to go. Right. Do you want to sit or do you want like on those stools or do you want to stand? I would stand? Prefer I'm easy. I, 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 sure. Okay. Maybe I'll just, I don't know, can everybody hear me? If, is that good? Louder? Yeah. Louder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so I thought I'd just maybe speak very briefly about um, why it was so uh, wonderful for me to have a performance in the show and um, particularly why it was really uh, fabulous for me to um, have uh, Karina here as well as Gary because um, uh, a lot of the show turns around the idea of how can we empathize and communicate like really deeply with other people and um, and so the title Inventing Hope goes to this notion of um, making a deep connection with another person like really trying to understand and with sign language I'm so um, uh, I find it so moving that it's not just going through motion it's actually trying to enter into um, the, the inner state of a person when they're making a gesture. At least this is my interpretation. Karina might have something uh, else to say about it. But uh, as a result, this idea of um, our separateness but our ability to kind of connect through language uh, and the poetry of sign language as well is uh, something that I wanted to uh, uh, just involve. And so uh, Gary is somebody who uh, Iga uh, mentioned as being you know, a, a wonderful kind of celebrity, and everybody was very excited, <laughs> like, oh, Gary Kirkham. So, uh, you know, he's very open to everything, actually, very physical, and he suggested that uh, uh, he knew this very talented uh, actress or actor that we could involve, Karina. So it was a great um, um, collaboration to see how they would respond to the work. And um, it's a sh you know a show as artists know it's up for a very short time so I have this short little window to kind of understand it and if you bring in people with their own kind of uh, creativity and all their emotional background they bring all that experience to bear and they can kind of open up parts of the work that I would not have access to so if I hadn't had this performance uh, I wouldn't have had the I wouldn't have seen like Gary or Karina respond to it, so it's actually it's a very uh, it was a very meaningful, uh, wonderful opportunity that the gallery that Iga's uh, sort of provided. So I'm very appreciative. And uh, anyway, maybe you have questions, but I think maybe Gary or Karina might like to comment on it. Sure. Um, yeah, it was exciting to come into this space here and let us play. And it was interesting. So I think Iga and I first talked about it, and then the three of us. Uh, talked about it and realizing that the the fact that it was going to be uh, taken down today would be the uh, essence of the piece of, of what it's like to have a piece taken down and so we had talked about the philosophical like what we felt like it is should be and then we said well go bring Karina in and then she'll rule the room and so <laughs> and so uh, uh, and that was it, Karina, my job, and, and Peggy, who's the translator's job, was to make sure that Karina really drives the room. And so what happened in the, the rehearsal hall was a good chunk of what Karina was in, in, interpreting to the piece herself, and, uh, and everybody else was trying to keep up. <laughs> and that was exciting to be in. I think we still laid the groundwork, and then, and then the collaboration was fun to do. So I don't know what you want to say. Well, for me, it was so fascinating because um, uh, American Sign Language is my language. It's, um, I have a strong cultural um, feel for the deaf community. And so to see the uh, Shakespearean uh, story come to life and, and Libby's artwork um, come to my life and with the emotion and whatnot, like for the sign, just, um, it's not just a sign. The facial expression shows more than um, that needs to be incorporated. So, um, so with my background and then Gary's background, um, we collaborated, and I think it was a wonderful experience for me. And I, I'm happy that uh, folks had a little bit of an insight as to my culture, my deaf culture. I thought maybe I'll make another comment, uh, thanking. Um uh, Jeff and Barb who were here deinstalling the show because we're also very aware of how long it takes to put something up 
but it's just a kind of timely reminder of how quickly the complicated things that we build in, in the world, all the things that really matter, whether it's relationships or a cathedral or, you know, a society, it's so fast to take it down, even if you're doing it really carefully. It's very easy to destroy things and it's very, very difficult to build things. So that's actually what I'm interested in is like building uh, relationships and building complexity and, and uh, trying, to, um, uh, trying to build better, uh, better relationships and trying to be better too in the process. So. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question for Libby. It took you so long to figure out what's going through your stomach right now. It's being taken down so quickly. Oh, uh, no, I'm, I'm sort of, this is like kind of celebratory to have a show end with a performance like this, so it's not depressing. Otherwise, sometimes it is depressing. I was only nervous with a little tree. <laughs> but no, I, I feel like this is a wonderful kind of way to end an exhibition myself. So, And it just becomes material that becomes something else. So I'm, I'm resigned and now I don't need to worry that people will <laughs> destroy things. You know? so, there's always these underlying anxieties. So it's good. It's good. It's time. So. I have a question for you. Um, when you were uh, initially coming up with the concept for this, for this exhibition, uh -huh. did you uh, think to incorporate sign language um, in the, like this whole performance thing, or was this an afterthought once you saw the, the exhibition up and people interacting with it, was that sort of the next step? Was it an evolution or was that in your plan when you began? Um, I had videotaped the uh, performance with the puppet in Scotland a couple of years ago. So I was very interested in, I became interested in sign language. Not proper sign language, I learned it through YouTube. So I, I've been corrected and, you know, I would like to study it because I, I thought it was a, uh, like a profoundly prophetic, uh, poetic language, which I had no idea of until I actually started to look at it a little bit. And it made me think, oh, it's like, you know, all human beings, there's so many aspects that are just hidden to us. So I thought it was really uh, just a, a revelation to me. And so when I did this show, that, that was a theme that I was developing. I didn't think that there would be a performance with um, a deaf actor, but I thought, um, that it was just wonderful that there could be because I thought it would be very interesting to reach out to uh, the deaf community and see how they might respond to it. So I was interested. I didn't think I'd have the opportunity to do something with it, but very grateful. Well, I just wanted to say that the work is visually beautiful and it, um, the performance actually added a whole other layer to it. Oh, yeah, so, I think so too. It was very well done and I very much enjoyed it. Good, I'm glad. We're all glad. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, uh, Peggy as our uh, the signer, and so she is able to, you know, bridge two worlds. And when uh, when Karina first did her performance, uh, the rehearsal of um, the poor naked wretches, uh, Peggy said, "Oh, you don't know." That was brilliant, <laughs> but we did know. We just didn't know fully because, you know, the, just the gestural language that can communicate. But um, yeah. But anyway, so yeah. Uh, it was, it, I talked about having Peggy in the room because all of a sudden, uh, Queen and I worked together, and we didn't have a, a translator in the room, and it was amazing how quickly our creation together worked with having a translator in the room. And in the end, uh, I, I uh, we we. We just ran like as fast as we could, you know. And uh, Peggy was just catching up, trying to trying to do it. But uh, so we were not um, the there was no language barrier in a sense because we were such in our bodies, so that we were just ex saying things. And at, at some point, you might nobody might have communicated anything. We just started doing things, and so there was this blur between languages and our bodies and moving and, and, and making it happen and then at some point she realized we just did something without talking about it quite a lot mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was the fun thing about the, the space that you always knew where you were going and having Peggy as an advocate in the room as well saying okay 
this is needs to happen, this is how you how we do it, and just the logistics of making that happen so that it's not like uh, Karina has to fit in with us. It's like we're all on a uh, on that kind of even even scale, and so we can all collaborate together. There's no disconnect. There's no power uh, disconnect at all. And it was extraordinary how seamless it became. It was great that Peggy and I are friends to begin with as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it helped that relationship. I don't know if you want to say something, Karina. No, I agree fully with what you said. Okay. <laughs> Just a quick comment that it's wonderful when these two worlds bridge. We had children who had children friends who had parents who were deaf, and we got involved. Mm -hmm. Neat children do that. They right. like us. But use your iPad when you meet someone deaf. Tap. Mm -hmm. You don't let the barrier be something. Right. You just tap on your own. Yeah, and I think the the, the child yeah, is exactly be committed. Yeah. Um, and that that sign that we used, um, part the Jess sign. This sign, that's the tapping. That's um, uh, getting someone's attention. So, okay. and deaf people are visual. Um, so we incorporated some deaf culture into the performance that you may not have uh, noticed, but the eye contact is so important when communicating. Um, so my suggestion is if you meet a deaf person, make eye contact. Um, hearing people tend to look away, um, and eye contact with one another tends to make, with a stranger, makes uh, people who can hear uncomfortable and maybe a little nervous. So be brave and, and, and make eye contact and that's the first step to communication. <laughs> so put down your things and yeah, let's give them a deaf <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>